Hi students, my name is Sinana. Welcome to studying the subject of social studies. Today we are going to learn the unit 10 in geography, Indian industries. Very interesting, right? Like students, have you ever imagined from sugar cane how sugar is made and from that so many chocolates are made that are your favorite, how cars have been manufactured, how a light bulb is manufactured, so many things. All of this is because of industries. In this chapter students, we will learn about the meaning of an industry and why it is important. Of course, it's really, really important because we can't just use raw materials as they are. We need to do some processes to refine it. So, industries are very important. Localization of industries. What is the meaning of localization? There will be a cotton textile industry where cotton is grown. So, localization of industries. Major industrial regions in India and major industries. We will be learning about iron and steel. We learn about aluminium, cotton textiles, sugar, paper industries and the knowledge based industries of India. Let's begin with learning the meaning and importance of industries. Many natural resources and raw materials cannot be utilized. If I give you sugar cane and I'm like make cake for me, can you do it? You can't. You need to refine it. You need to first make sugar. That sugar can be used to make your favorite sweets, chocolates and cakes. So they have to be processed or refined. For example, conversion of sugar cane into sugar, iron, and, iron ore into steel, cotton into cloth, wood pulp into paper, etc. These are such amazing and beautiful conversions. So the conversion of raw materials into usable products is known as manufacturing industries. For one mark, very, very important. Why are industries important? They are vital. Vital means very important, very essential for economic progress. It gives jobs to so many people and the development of industries reduces the reliance on primary products. So now if we have an industry based product, we rely less on primary or agricultural related raw products. Imported goods, it also reduces our dependence on imported goods because now we can manufacture within our own country. It helps to increase the national and per capita income and earn foreign exchange. It creates job opportunities, it raises GDP and the living standard of people. It also reduces the pressure on agriculture. How? Let's say there are 10,000 people who are doing agricultural jobs, but now there is a new industry, an iron and steel industry opened that has jobs for 5,000 people. So imagine the same 5,000 people can now do agricultural work of 10,000 people and they can earn, they can earn more because now 5,000 people are also working in an industry. So it reduces the pressure on agriculture. Localization of industries, what is this? The localization and growth of industries are influenced by many factors. Localization means having an industry in a particular local area. What, what could be? Like if I am choosing, okay, I want to make cars. So I am going to set up my industry in Karnataka or I am going to set up my industry in Gujarat or I am going to set up my industry in West Bengal. How do I make this decision? What are the factors? Let us look at the factors affecting localization. Supply of raw material. Like for example, if I want to open a cotton textile factory, cotton must be easily available there. Supply of power, transport and communication facilities. Why transport and communication? I need raw material to come to my factory. After I convert it to textile, I should be able to send it to the market very easily. If I am in some hilltop, how will I do all this? So transport and communication facilities, market facilities, people should be there to buy otherwise for whom I would be manufacturing all of this. Capital, availability of adequate money to start an industry, labor and water supply, ideal climate and supportive government policies must be there. So what are the major industrial regions of India and what is an industrial region? An industrial region refers to a region with concentration of one or a variety of industries. 
it is dominated by industries and industrial activities and it is mostly an urban area. For example, whenever we talk about Bangalore, we talk about the IT capital of the world, Silicon Valley, all knowledge based industries, IT companies are there in Bangalore. So, all these industries of IT are there in Bangalore, it is specialized in that. Industrial regions located in areas where ideal factors for their location are found. Whatever factors if they are needed and are provided, an industry would be located in that region. What are the eight major industrial regions of India? You should know them all students. The Hooghly Kolkata region, the Mumbai Pune region, the Ahmedabad Vadodara region, Madurai Coimbatore region, the Delhi Meerut region, Vishakhapatnam Guntur region and the Kolkata Tiruvannantapuram region. Now, what are the major industries? We will learn each one of them in detail. Let us begin with iron and steel industry. It is the basis of all other industries, bridges, roads, aircraft, automobiles, everything is there because of iron and steel. So, it is like a foundation for every other industry to be there. Many industries like engineering, locomotives, machine tools, automobiles, agricultural equipment, everything depends on iron and steel industry. It is the most important metal industry of India. Ancient India even knew the art of smelting iron ore. Smelting iron ore means melting iron ore and refining it to obtain pure iron. How do we know in ancient India we knew this? There is an iron pillar in Delhi which is a proof that in ancient India this technique was known. The modern iron and steel industry in India was started in which year? In the year 1874 at Kulti in West Bengal. And who can we give this credit to? Who started this industry? It goes to J.N. Tata who started Tata Iron and Steel Company in 1907 in Sakchi in Jamshedpur. It has made great progress after independence. So, students we learned iron and steel industry is the foundation for all the other industries. We also learned that J N Tata was the first person to start the Tata Iron and Steel Company and after independence there has been so much growth in this industry. What are the factors? Now, if I want to open an iron and steel industry in Bangalore, can I just open it? No, it is not like that. There must be some factors as we discussed, there are certain factors. For iron and steel industry in particular, what are these factors? Let us look. Supply of basic raw material of iron ore. Iron ore must be available. Coking coal as a main source of power and hydel power. Coking coal is used in the smelting of iron ore. It must be available. Hydel power must be available. Railway transport and port facilities. After you have made iron and steel, from iron you converted it to steel. Now you want to export it to various parts of the world or in various parts of India. You must have transport and port facilities. Plenty of water supply, cheap labor, because a lot of people are needed to work in an iron and steel industry. It is not like one person can do a lot of work. You need lot of people. So, labor must be cheaply available, capital and local market. Production center. There are 14 integrated iron and steel plants in India, of which 4 are in private sector and the rest are under the government in the public sector.